Well, I think after they die, they'd be like, just pretty much going somewhere, just hanging out pretty much. It's like pretty much whatever they want. I'm not going to worry about what's going to happen later. Uh, I think it's just like, like when you're like knocked unconscious, it's all dark and you don't remember anything. There's just, it's just, it's nothing. That's what I think. It's just nothing. I believe you go to heaven. I think of what life was like before I was even born. That's probably what it's like. You don't know. Um, after life, I don't know. Nothing. Um, I would like to believe that they go off to a better place. Uh, which I, I believe that. We go off to a better place and uh, hopefully come back. Are you afraid of dying? Am I afraid of dying? Yes, because when I die, it's, that's it. I'm probably going to regret how I lived before. Now maybe some of you are wondering, where in the Bible does it say that Jesus used the Ten Commandments to help a person see that he needs God's forgiveness? Well, you can find it all through the Bible, but you could find it specifically in um, Luke 18, Luke 10, Matthew 15, Matthew 19, and right now let's look at Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Now here is a story where a man comes running up to Jesus, gets down on his knees, and says, Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, I don't know about you, but if someone ever said that to me, I'd be pretty excited. I mean, out of the blue, someone runs up and says, what do I have to do to get eternal life? Now, notice what Jesus said. Notice he did not say, oh, my friend, I'm so glad you asked. Listen, you have a God-shaped hole in your heart that only I can fill. And in a little while, I'm going to die on a cross. And if you'll just believe in me and say this sinner's prayer with all your heart, you'll be forgiven and go to heaven when you die. No, Jesus didn't say that. He said, why do you call me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. So Jesus started by correcting this man's understanding of what good meant. And then he gave him the Ten Commandments. That's kind of strange, but Jesus pointed him to five of them. He said, you shall not lie, you shall not steal, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, honor your father and mother. And the man says, I've kept all these since my youth. And then Jesus pointed him to the essence of the first and the second commandment and said, go sell all that you have, give to the poor, then you'll have treasure in heaven and come follow me. He was pointing out the fact that this man's God was his money and you cannot serve both God and money. So how can we share the Ten Commandments as Jesus did with someone so they can see their need of God's forgiveness? Well, why don't we do it right now? Let's do it. We'll begin by asking you a question. Do you consider yourself to be a good person? They say, yeah, yeah, I'm a very good person. Well, let's ask a few questions using the commandments to see if that's true. Have you ever told a lie? Now be honest. Ever told a fib, a white lie, a half truth or an exaggeration? You say, yeah, I've told one or two. So what does that make you? It makes you a liar. Have you ever stolen something? Anything, even if it's small, irrespective of its value. Be honest, listen to the voice of your conscience. You say, yeah, yeah, I have taken things, just little things. Third commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Have you ever used God's name as a cuss word to express disgust? That's called blasphemy. It's a very serious sin in the sight of God. Or listen to the seventh. You've heard it said by them of old, you shall not commit adultery. But listen to what Jesus said. But I say to you, whoever looks upon a woman to lust after her, has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Have you ever done that? I mean, seriously, who hasn't? Well, if you said yes to those commandments and you, you violated them, then in God's sight, you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous adulterer at heart. 
And that's only four of the Ten Commandments. There's another six. And if you're found in your sins on the Day of Judgment, you'll be guilty. And the Bible says you'll end up in hell. What a terrible thought. The Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no adulterer, no fornicator, no blasphemer will inherit God's kingdom. So what are you going to do? Well, this is where the good news of the gospel comes in. God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, to die on the cross. When Jesus was on the cross, He was being bruised for our iniquities. He was paying the fine for the law that you and I had violated. The Bible puts it this way, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what God offers you, everlasting life. So what should you do? Well, don't just confess your sins to God. Confess and forsake them. And don't just believe in Jesus. Put your trust in Him as you trust a parachute. And the moment you do that, you'll pass from death unto life.